The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Hello, my name is Branko Glišić, I am from Princeton University and I will present very briefly some results that we have on the Straker Bridge on Princeton University campus and all the measurements that we made are strain-based. So I would like just to acknowledge, you know, the agencies, Princeton University, companies, people that helped all this project over the last six or seven years. I would like to start with what we are trying to achieve with structural health monitoring. This is a kind of definition that I like to use with my students, that this is a process aimed at providing accurate in time and actionable information concerning structural health condition and performance. And if you look what is important here and what is the key is how to transform the data into the information. I think in the previous presentations we heard a lot of talks about this. So here I will actually show some kind of simple methods, and the bridge is relatively simple, so this is why it was possible probably, how we can achieve certain, you know, uh, interpretation of the data using structural health monitoring. So let me first present the bridge. The bridge is built on Princeton University campus. It is pedestrian bridge. It has very particular shape that you could actually see on the very first slide. So if you look from the top, you have a main span, which is part which is here, and then there are four we call them approaching legs that are part of the bridge. And if you look here, we see that in the main span, we have, it is deck stiffened arch, and the legs are continuous girders. So it, the deck is completely made of concrete, and the arch and the columns are built of steel. The location of the sensor is in the concrete, and I used fiber optic sensors. I used two technologies. The first one is long gauge discrete fiber pragmatic sensors. They were installed at the locations where we expect the maximum moments, either positive or negative. And also, we have some sensors at the locations where we expect virtually zero moments. And also, we have the sensors at this specific place because the two parts of the bridge were built in different times. And then I have distributed fiber optic sensor, which is a kind of cable that is also embedded in the concrete, and it follows just the longest clear span that we have here on the bridge. In different sections, I have different packages of the sensors. So there is always two sensors that are parallel, as you can see here. There are one on the top, the other one on the bottom. There are some temperature sensors, and sometimes there are some packages of the sensors on the side. I will not speak too much about those other sensors here. Again, you can see there are some sensors in different direction. I will mostly speak about those sensors that are parallel. And in this location here, we have sensors that are both distributed and discrete sensors that are next to each other, so we can compare the results. The sensors are embedded in the concrete. Here you can see a distributed sensor that is tied to the rebars, and then the discrete sensors, those are white tubes, hosting optical fibers. Here are some cross-set sensors. Again, the package of the sensors of the different length. And then the concrete is poured over the sensors, again, distributed and discrete. And now the sensors are in the concrete. So the drawback is that, you know, when you have visits, you cannot show the system. You just say they are somewhere in the deck and, you know, they are invisible. The great advantage is that they are in the deck, so they measure what happens inside, and also the deck provides protection for the sensors, so you don't need to put any additional protection for the system. Now the system performances are shown here, so it's quite classical for fiber optics. We have around plus minus one microstrain repeatability and 20 microstrain in case of distributed systems. So obviously the distributed system has less performance in terms of measurement compared to discrete sensors. However, the distributed sensor is virtually everywhere in the structure because it's a cable sensitive in every location while discrete sensors are at some specific location. So both of them, they have some advantages and disadvantages. So uh, let's start with some results that we have. So the first I will start with typical diagram that we have during the construction of the bridge. Here we see the swelling of the concrete due to the hydration. Then we have the contraction due to the cooling down. And then we detected unusual behavior here, and that was actually cracking in the deck that happened. We'll see that it happened at four locations in total. Both systems were able to detect it with different accuracy, so FBG had better accuracy than the BOTDA, which I already mentioned before. And then when the post-tensioning was applied to the bridge, both systems started to measure again the same value, so we have comparable results. 
as I said, we have agreement between the systems. We are sure here that we detected something. So why I say we are sure? Because you have the forms and you have the cover on top of the bridge. You cannot go and see. So we only once all these things are removed, you could actually uh, visually inspect the bridge. But then at that time, the post tensioning was applied, so the cracks were closed. So nothing really to see. Okay, so what we did, we decided to perform the evaluation to see how the crack affected the bridge and the way we did it. So I just now show the sensors once again to highlight that there is a part of the bridge built in August when it was warm weather and there is another part which was built in the fall and it was cooler at that time. And actually the cracks occurred in the part that was built later on and we can see that the same day it happened in these three locations and a couple of days later it happened here at the joint between the new and, and kind of existing structure. So we used the sensors in order to calculate the pre-stressing force inside the bridge, and then we wanted to compare the pre-stressing force with the design in order to see if there is good agreement or not. So in this image here, you can see the black continuous line is what we got from the monitoring. The gray line is what is the design, and dashed lines are actually the band of uncertainty. And here, important thing to say is that the darker line is uncertainty without taking into account uncertainty in the young modulus of the concrete. And the other one shows how much just uncertainty in the young modulus of the concrete adds to the interpretation of the measurements. So the young modulus we calculated from the strength using the ACI formula. And ACI also gives plus minus 20% of uncertainty when you apply this formula. So here we detected three unusual behaviors, three kind of discrepancies between the design and measurement. So the first one is in the middle of the bridge, and we see here that we actually measure a lower value than design. And then the two others are actually here. And here you see that our design is out of the thresholds, even when we take the bigger margin of uncertainty. So the interpretation for the first one is actually higher stiffness in the middle of the bridge. So the reason for this is that we have very short columns here, and it looks like that deck is not acting as a deck, but the deck and this part of the arch acts together as a composite structure, which actually has higher stiffness than just using the deck. And this results in apparent lower pores here. And then two others here are actually consequence of anchoring that happened here. Originally, the bridge was designed to be built in one run. For some reasons, the second part here was delayed. So what happened is that they post-tensioned the bridge and fixed anchors here. Those are kind of intermediary anchors, but they were not included into design. And what we see here is actually the anchor losses that happened here at this connection, at that location. So then in the span where we actually had the cracking here, we see that we have good correspondence between black and gray line, which means that we are close to the design values. So we didn't notice any significant issue, except that obviously we have bigger uncertainty in the termination of the pre-stress force at location of the crack, because when you measure the crack closure, there is a part of the strain that goes to the crack closure and the part of the strain that is the real strain that is applied in the structure. So I don't go in detail how it is made. We have papers published on this. It's not as simple as I show it here. It requires you to perform some calculus and some analysis, but this is the eventual results that we have. Then we wanted to see what is the crack state, and I didn't notice, you know, when I put this slide, that here is the strain value. So you have to multiply it by 0 0.6, which is 0 0.6 meters, which is the length of the sensor to get the crack opening. And that what you get here is that the crack opening, when I convert this one, will be in the range of 0 0.01 millimeters. So it is around 10 micrometers, which is far below the 0 0.3 millimeters that is tolerable crack width. The bars that you see here show 80% confidence. So we, our zero is within 80% confidence for all of them. So if there is any crack remaining open within this 20% of uncertainty, it is definitely smaller than the 0 0.3 millimeters that we have here. So we can say that residual cracks, if present, are not critical for the structure. Here, I think that what I said before, we want data to be transformed to information. So we already now had some information. We have information about distribution of the force, and we see that the force is close to design. We have explanation about discrepancies, and here we have the evaluation of the crack closure. So we can say that in this case, because there is no real damage to structure, we achieved level four monitoring where we have actually information directly correlated to the state of the structure. So what we wanted to see is, you know, at this location of the joint, remember we have two sets of sensors on one side and on the other side, so we don't really cover the joint. So we wanted to see, can we somehow access if the continuity of the joint is preserved, because we don't really have good monitoring at that location. So when we analyze the data after the construction, which is shown here, so the crack is again visible here. Here at that location, we actually have the form removal, and if you zoom it out, you can see the change in the strain when the forms are removed. And actually, this can be used as a load test, right? So you remove the forms, you activate dead load, 
and you see what happens. So what we did, we actually did it. So this is the diagram of the curvature change that corresponds to the bending moment diagram. And what we saw is that at the location of the joint, the gray line would be the original uh, finite element, you know, assume that we have good continuity. And then the black line is fitted to the dashed line, which are actually the measurements. So in this case, we see that we have a change and we have a kind of 30% reduction of the stiffness at that specific location. So our conclusion is that we have unusual behavior identified at that location, which actually tell us that the stiffness at that joint is not as we would expect it to be. So obviously there are some consequences because the bridge is built in, in two phases. Another thing we studied is the neutral axis, and this is really interesting thing. Removal of the form creates no axial force, so we would expect neutral axis to coincide with the centroid of stiffness, which is the critical point in the cross-section. But that's what we saw. We saw that we are actually 50 millimeters lower, and it is systematic over all the points over the bridge. So it looks like our centroid of stiffness is not where it should be, and it's over all the length of the bridge. Obviously, we detected this unusual behavior, and we were able to explain it, actually, by playing with the effective stiffness of the bridge. The bridge, it's very wide and very shallow, if I may say, and there are the voids that are shown here. The question is, do we really have complete width of the bridge effective, or we have more like similar to T-beam shape behavior? So we did some simplified analysis, and we saw that actually, yes, it looks like we have reduced effective width of the cross-section. And then if you observe the sensors, remember I had some sensors also on this side here, and this one was above in the depth. It was above the sensor that is here. And actually, if you compare, we see that the values that we get from these sensors are even below the first one. So we really see that there is some reduced effectiveness of the cross-section. So again, we were able to identify unusual behavior in terms of we were able to understand what actually happens, and we were able to see how it affects the bridge. So finally, we performed structural identification using you know, some static measurements. Those are influence lines, and we compared the influence lines from the FEM with that what we really got from the measurements. And then we also did dynamic system identification using students as the force to excite the bridge. That's very nice, you know. <laughs> One thing that we found is, remember, we detected some unusual behavior in the middle of the bridge. We say that we have higher stiffness, and actually the test confirmed this. So here we see that we have basically higher stiffness because we have lower values of the measurement than we would expect with the finite elements. And then the other one is at the location where we have the joint. This is the joint that I've shown. I had this 30% reduction, and actually, again, we were able to confirm it with the test. So we actually have good agreement between form of removal test and our or a structural identification. So at the end, you know, I presented the SEGM system. We had some early age cracking. We were able to evaluate the pre-stress force and pre-release crack. What happened with them? We were able to evaluate the joint. We saw that based on the neutral axis analysis, we have some change in effectiveness of the cross-section. We performed structural identification. And at the end, the conclusion is that all the effects that we found in the bridge, and we, really a lot of them, does not really affect significantly the bridge. So the bridge is in good shape, and we continue to monitor it and to use it as our research kind of facility in Princeton. With this, thank you very much.